I made builds for all three of my characters to play like the Republic Commandos from the Star Wars universe. With Republic Commando releasing on the Nintendo Switch in the near future, I figured it was a good time to make these builds. I've been in love with the Republic Commando series ever since I built my first computer and immediately installed the game. I have played the game religiously, found every easter egg, read all the books, and even made myself a suit of Republic Commando armor out of duct tape and sheet metal when I was in high school. Unfortunately, it turns out that I didn't take any photographs of the armor before I recycled it into my Mandalorian armor, so here's my buddy and I in our duct tape and sheet metal Mandalorian armor being goofballs after school. Anyways, here's the premise for the builds. The weapons that the Republic Commandos use are the DC-17 blaster rifle that can be reconfigured quickly in the field, a blaster pistol, and a vibro knife hidden in their gauntlets. The DC-17 standard configuration is a fully automatic blaster rifle that has a more compact design than the standard Clone Trooper DC-15 blaster rifle, so for that I can use either an auto rifle or an SMG. The other configurations for the DC-17 are a sniper rifle and a grenade launcher, so I can use those weapon archetypes as well. For the blaster pistol I considered using a hand cannon, but hand cannons are way too big and slow firing, so I limited myself to only adaptive frame sidearms. Now because the Republic Commando melee is literally punching opponents with a knife attached to their fist, I had to use subclasses that actually punched, which ruled out anything with a thrown melee or a shoulder charge. Oh, and I tried to make them look as much like Republic Commandos as possible, so in no particular order is the Warlock build. For the super, I ran Well of Radiance with a solar grenade and a healing rift. The reason I chose this super is because it's all about helping out your allies and keeping them alive. In Republic Commando, they have a device that is used to stabilize down squad mates, and having divine protection and a healing rift can operate in a similar fashion, sort of. The primary I used is Friction Fire with Wellspring, which helps to keep the rift and grenade charged. And the secondary slot is the Nikolos Sniper Rifle version 1.0.2 that has box breathing, no distractions, and Nikolos rounds. Box breathing and no distractions activate at the same time, so it's always advantageous to keep the weapon aimed for a brief moment before firing. Then in the heavy slot is the Prospector Exotic Grenade Launcher. Keeping with the theme of versatile weapons, the Prospector does both arc damage on the explosion and solar burn damage after. I was actually really surprised as to how much damage this thing could put out in a short amount of time. There were a couple of encounters where I'd hold the trigger to dump the magazine into a barrier champion, and the champion would be dead before they could actually activate their barrier. Now, for dealing with the champions, I used overloaded SMG and anti-barrier sniper rifle on the gauntlets. Then on the bond is Inferno Whip to stagger the unstoppable champions with the solar melee. For the charge with light mods, I have shield break charge to become charged with light. Radiant light causes allies to become charged when I activate a super, as well as giving a plus 20 to mobility. Then on the chest I use Reactive Pulse which gives a powerful overshield while performing a finisher, and when charged with light and surrounded by combatants you emit a burst of arc energy. Then to top off the charge with light mods is Protective Light where you gain a significant damage resistance when you are charged with light and your shields are destroyed, but at a cost of negative 10 strength. Then for the other various mods I used Insulation and Better Already to get a little more usage out of orbs of power and grenade launcher reserves along with grenade launcher ammo finder in order to keep the prospector constantly fed for those large bursts of damage. And finally, I used the Sanguine Alchemy exotic chess piece which has the perk blood magic. Getting kills while in a rift extends the rift's duration. Now with how quickly I can get the rift charged, there were a lot of instances where I had multiple rifts going all at once. Just like with the other two classes, the Titan was built for Nightfall Strikes, but have had a lot of success taking out Invaders and Gambit with how suppressive this build can get. Starting with the weapons is Truth Teller, with an absolutely amazing role of Disruption Break, Feeding Frenzy, and Blinding Grenades. I didn't really use Blinding Grenades much until I made this build, and now I'm in love with them. It's very beneficial to be able to blind a group of enemies, especially with the enemy density and the latest strikes. Blinding Grenades allow you to get tactical in a fight, and make enemies fight on your terms. I had a lot of success pairing it with the auto rifle False Promises that has Sympathetic Arsenal and Feeding Frenzy. Sympathetic Arsenal reloads all stowed weapons upon reloading after a final blow, and Feeding Frenzy progressively increases reload speed after each kill. Now I'm sure some of you can already see what a fun combo this can become. Launch a blinded grenade into a group, clean up with the False Promise, quickly reload, then swap back to Truth Trailer to blind more enemies. And rounding off the Titan's weapons is the Darcy Exotic Sniper Rifle. Darcy fits beautifully with the Republic Commando theme because it gives a lot of information when aiming down the scope. 
and because of the new anti-barrier sniper mod this season, it absolutely murders barrier champions from afar. If you're not familiar with the weapon, essentially you just aim at an enemy for a brief moment, and Darcy does practically everything much better. Now the super that I use is the bottom tree cut of the Juggernaut, both because it has a punching melee, and because I can get flashbang grenades to help with stunning rooms of enemies. In Republic Commando you do a lot of door breaches where you breach a door, lob a grenade in, and quickly clear the room, and the Titan's flashbangs very much fit that theme. Now for Charge with Light mods, I use Blast Radius and Shield Break to become Charge with Light, then to use that charge, I put on Firepower, where you regain a portion of your grenade energy when you throw a grenade when charged with light. For helping out allies to get their charges of light, I use Powerful Friends that gives a plus 20 to mobility and gives nearby allies charge of light when you become charged with light. I also used Radiant Light, which gives a plus 20 to strength and causes nearby allies to become charged when you cast your super. For dealing with champions, I have the aforementioned Anti-Barrier Sniper Rifle mod, along with Surge Detonator so that the Arc Grenades will stun Overload champions. The exotic armor was a difficult choice between Crush of Alpha Lupi and Armamentarium. Having an extra flashbang grenade was really nice, but I ultimately ended up going with the Crush of Alpha Lupi because getting heals from barricades along with the extra orb for allies was just way too useful. Now the other assorted mods I used are Sniper Rifle Ammo Finder and Grenade Launcher Scavenger in order to keep my heavy and special weapons topped off. Bolstering detonation on the gauntlets is really useful because you can get into a loop pretty quickly of putting up barricades and throwing grenades. I had a couple leftover energy points on the chest armor, so I used solar resistance and sniper damage resistance. And finally on the mark is outreach, which gives melee energy upon using the barricade. Now as I mentioned at the beginning, I've been having a lot of success with this build against invaders and gambit. It seems like not many people use the blinding grenades on grenade launchers, so every time I hit an invader with it, I was almost always guaranteed either to kill them or keep them from killing anybody else on my team. With the Hunter, I went with the Arc Strider's Way of the Warrior because of Combat Flow and Combination Blow. I paired this with the Gambler's Dodge for that amazing combination of Punch, Dodge, Punch, and then Dodge again, then Punch again, and gaining health regeneration and increased damage for every melee kill. For weapons, I went with the Lonesome Sidearm. Now because the subclass has an emphasis on melees, I used the roll with Swashbuckler and Rapid Hit, which makes this weapon hit harder and reload crazy fast. In the secondary slot, I decided to use the most versatile sniper rifle in the game, Borealis. Long press reload to change elemental type, and breaking a shield with it will load one round from reserves into the magazine, and matching the element of the shields grants bonus damage for the rest of the magazine. Now if you're familiar with where enemies are going to be spawning or walking, having a grenade launcher with sticky grenades can help you get out of sticky situations. Having a Rampage on my Behringer's memory alongside sticky grenades can get really silly because Rampage will activate on those grenades even if I stole the weapon and begin doing other things. Liar's Handshake fit the Republic Commando theme beautifully because the model for the gauntlets have literal knives sticking out of the ends. Liar's Handshake has the exotic perk cross counter which states, Using an arc melee ability or being hit by a melee attack will allow you to follow up with an extremely powerful melee counter punch that will heal you. This effect stacks with everything from the subclass and can turn someone into a really nasty little stab machine. The Charge with Light mods are similar to the other two classes. Become Charge with Light by breaking a combatant shield with the matching elemental type, or by getting rapid kills with a sniper rifle. Help out your allies with Radiant Light by charging them with light every time you cast your super, with the added bonus of plus 20 to strength. Then to use any charges of light you have is Striking Light, which spawns one orb of power for allies when you get a melee kill when you are charged. Plus, it gives damage resistance when sprinting. Then for dealing with the champions is the Surge Detonators, which allows for arc grenades to sun overload champions, and the arms is Anti-Barrier Sniper Rifle for dealing with those Anti-Barrier champions. Plus, this comes with the added bonus of allowing the Ionic Return perk on Borealis to count barriers and reload itself. For the other various armor perks, I use Sniper Rifle Reserve, Sniper Rifle Scavenger, and Sniper Rifle Ammo Finder, and Sniper Rifle Targeting, all to make Borealis as lethal as possible. Melee damage resistance is great because I'm constantly within melee range of enemies, and finally on the boots is better already which gives health regen upon picking up an orb of power. And there you have it, a Republic Commando build for every class. Unfortunately there isn't a fourth class to round out the fourth commando on a squad, but if one ever does come out I will absolutely be making a Republic Commando build for it. If you are interested in the fashion of it all, I've put in the description all the armors and shaders that I used.